welcome to part two of D-Lab's repurposing series. In part one, I repaired the power supply on this device. In part two, we are now going to configure it to be a Class A guitar amp. Okay, so here's where we left off. The power supply has been rebuilt. It now uses a 5U4 rectifier, got some fresh filter caps installed. Here is our output tube, which is a 6L6. So the next thing I need to do is get everything else out of the way that is not going to be part of this guitar amp. So all these items you see on top are out of here. Let's take a look on the bottom side and see what needs to go out there. All right, here we are bottom side. The AC input section is going to remain intact. Here's my new filter caps. Up front though, you see we have a bunch of switches. There's one here, one in the center, and one here on the left. The one on the left is actually the power on standby switch. I'm going to keep that, but these two switches are leaving as well as all these coils. We're going to clear this area because that will be our preamp stage. Well, there's all the parts that used to be on the chassis. Time to get this thing configured. Before I go into the actual configuration and layout of the amplifier, I ended up making some changes to the power supply after receiving input from you. So I've got some changes here I want to show you, and then we'll move forward with the configuration. All right, first change, I went back to the 5Y3 rectifier rather than the 5U4. The high voltage was running a little too hot for the 6L6, and I determined that because it is at a high voltage and lower current, the 5Y3 is plenty capable of doing the job. So there he is. Let me show you what I did underside. I also made some changes in the power supply circuit. I added the 330K balancing resistors across the filter caps to keep those voltages equal. And we also added a voltage divider. So these are 25K 10 watt resistors in series. And at their midpoint, we're going to see about 250 volts that will feed the 12AX7 preamp circuit. Well, here's where we're at with the power supply now that I've made the changes. Now it has the 5Y3, the different filtering system, and the voltage divider. This meter is monitoring the high voltage for the 6L6, and that meter is monitoring the plate voltage that will go to the 12AX7. I've got my Bariac over here. I'm going to bring it up. Watch my current. I do have my load resistor there simulating the current draw of the 6L6. So there we are. Full voltage. A little over 500 plate 6L6 and you see a little over 250 for the 12AX7. So let's first go through the mechanical layout and then I'll cut to the schematic and show you what we're going to do electronics wise. All right? So first off we're going to reuse the existing stock power switch. So it says off, standby, and on. And what's nice about this system is the standby actually raises the center tap of the power transformer which makes the high voltage actually collapse whereas if you have a fender ramp the standby switch simply breaks the high voltage so it's still present. So this is a much nicer system and I believe much safer. Okay. Next, we have three pots here. This will be volume, this can be treble, and this will be bass. And up here, where it said amplitude, that will be our master volume control. This marker output now becomes the guitar input. Here's the back side of the unit. You can see we have three holes here. That is going to be for our speaker jacks. So we've got four, eight, and 16 ohm outputs. 5Y3 tube, 6L6, and ahead of that, in one of the existing holes, this would be the 12AX7. The main power transformer is going to stay where it's at, but this choke, I've decided to move it. The choke is going to go up here, behind the power light and in front of the power transformer because I want the output transformer to be near the speaker jacks. Okay. So this output transformer is made for a 6L6. It's the OT-10SE musical mat on eBay sells these for like 30 bucks. Look at the size of that thing. It's a monster. But you need it for the wattage that the 6L6 demands. 
All right, I went ahead and made the changes to the chassis. So there's the speaker output jacks. Output transformer now in its new location. The choke is up here. And there's our three tubes. So this thing is ready to start wiring. Well, here's a glimpse bottom side. There's our new pots installed. Power supply is ready. Transformer wire is coming in, ready to land on the speaker and the tubes. I need to put in some terminal strips for the other components. But man, are we close to building this Class A amp. So as you can see, we have the makings of a very cool amp here. This is the beauty of repurposing. You got to take something, use your imagination, do a little rearrangement, get your wiring in there, and eventually you're going to have a unique amp and your friends are going to be like, man, where'd you get that? So you're probably asking the question, why did I choose the single-ended type circuit, Class A? Well, there's many reasons, but the first one is it's simple. And I wanted this to be a very simple, straightforward presentation. I know a lot of you said, hey, how about making a Class A B and adding gain and this and that? Well, you know what? We'll do that in future builds. But in this build, I wanted to keep it basic so that anybody could do it. I hope I'm accomplishing that. Well, let me cut to the proposed schematic for a repurpose amp project. So here it is right in front of you. I actually did this drawing in Visio. So we'll start at the upper left and go across. So you see your input, and then we're going to go into the tone stack, and that was stolen from the Fender Princeton schematics, okay? So if you were to examine the AA1164 schematic, that's to the print, okay? It's a great little tone circuit, easy to do. From there, we're going to go into the output tube through the little coupling cap. But before it gets to the output tube, you see the master volume control. What's the beauty about a master volume on single-ended amps, it's not as complicated as an AB type where you're dealing with a negative bias because in this circuit, there is no negative bias, all right? We just go direct to the grid of that tube. And you see, I elected to use the cathode bias resistor type method. And you see the question mark there is because I don't know yet what the value of that resistor would be to pull the 30 milliamps through the tube. I got the information for that biasing through the Weber website. They've got the bias calculator. You should check that out. Now, if you look to the bottom left, you'll see our power supply. So it has those series capacitors to handle the higher voltage. The voltage divider circuit there, which is supplying 250 volts max to the 12AX7 tube. And the reason I did that, if you look at some of the fender schematics, they simply use a series resistor and they drop the voltage as the tube starts pulling current. Well, in this case, before that 12AX7 pulls current and you flip the switch, you could actually hit it with 500 volts. So the purpose of that divider is to ensure that it can never go over 250. All right, lastly, let's check out the output tube, which in this case is the 6L6. And you might think, why did I pick the 6L6? Well, it is the single-ended tube of choice, okay? You guys love the sound. It'll give you 10 solid watts of Class A power, and it's readily available. The other reason is, is the output transformer that I had was good for a 6L6. I know some of you said, hey, you could put a 6550 in there or a KT66. Well, I could, but I didn't have the output transformer to support it. And this whole project is about taking what you have, repurposing it, and keeping the cost down. So that is the main reason that I stuck with a 6L6. All right, so now Robert Mondavi and I want to talk about a serious matter with you. It's called safety. And you may be rolling your eyes like, come on, Terry. Well, when you're working on circuits like this, especially this design, there's 500 volts of potential sitting there waiting, okay? And it's good for about an amp of current. So if you get in there and you touch it, it is enough to kill you. Absolutely guarantee that. So make sure that your caps are fully discharged before you work on it. Unplug it, check the caps, and then check them again, okay? Make sure that thing's dead. 
Because believe me, I've been poked by it. It doesn't feel good. Another thing when you're repurposing old equipment, the power transformer, especially if it's been stored where it's been exposed to moisture, could possibly have shorts from the windings to ground or the case of the unit, right? So when you apply power, there could actually be potential on that case and you'd never know it until you start working on it. So the first thing you should always do when you grab a piece of equipment and say, I'm gonna turn this into something, get your own meter, check the primary and the secondary of that transformer to chassis and make sure you don't see any resistance, okay? It's gonna be like way up in the mega ohms, right? You should not see anything on your meter. If you see like a couple hundred ohms of resistance, don't plug it in because that transformer is bad or something outside of it has shorted to ground. All right, last few items. Always use rubber grommets when your wiring is going through the chassis to underneath, okay? A lot of guys just drill holes and they route the wires. Well, things vibrate and it starts chaffing those wires and eventually you'll get a short, which could lead to either equipment damage or shocking yourself. The other thing you notice is that this thing doesn't have a bottom cover. A lot of builders build amps and they don't put a cover on, they just slide it in the chassis. Well, that's okay if it's encased, but in this one, it's wide open, right? So I will be making an aluminum cover and sealing that bottom up. All right, so that's a wrap on part two of the repurposed amp, configuration and chassis layout. Part three, we're actually gonna wire this thing up and apply power and see some output. I bet you can't wait for that. We'll see you then.